uh, unique, interesting sort of stream. What I'm here to talk about today is something known as Valve's Steam Controller. Now, this nifty little device, as you may, or some of you may know, some of you may not have heard of, um, but basically to give you sort of a brief rundown of what it is, this is Valve's concept of what would happen if you took a video game controller like this, the Xbox 360, and fused it with this, your keyboard and mouse. <clears throat> now, I'm going to be kind of doing several things today. I'm going to be showcasing some situations where this works well. I'm also going to be explaining why they made this and what it is and my review on it. And I'm also going to explain a couple things about the software that works behind this wonderful little device that we call the Steam Controller. Now, first thing you'll notice is it doesn't look anything like any sort of controller that you may have ever seen before. I have several stickers on it, so it's going to look a little bit different than some. But you'll notice specifically that this controller has two touchpads, face buttons, joystick, the Steam sort of home button right here, and it also on the back boasts two clickable sort of side buttons, what we call the paddle buttons right here. Um, this clickable side button also, sorry, I'm pushing my keyboard, but anyway, this clickable side buttons also double as the battery compartment, so the batteries go in side by side. You have just sort of your Steam stuff, it clicks on, and it adds just a nice little sort of extra button set right there. Um, some interesting things about this controller as well, once I get the battery cover back on, right? Okay, anyway. So interesting things about this controller itself is A, when I want to, I can use this right touchpad as a mouse. So if I go back into Steam Big Picture mode here and I close it down, on my desktop, I can control my computer. So when I use my right, my right touchpad with my finger, you'll notice specifically that my mouse moves as well. Um, this is a very loud controller, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. And for what it is, it's actually very eloquently done, I have to say. For what it is, this controller has a lot of merit to it, has a lot of, I guess you could say, like, awesomeness, and a lot of people really love this controller. Um, now, let's go over specific use cases of why you would want this Steam controller. Well, not this, Steam, but why you would want the Steam controller as a whole. So, to, talk, to explain that, I'm going to talk about sort of why video games are the way they are and how they work a little bit. So, with video games, on, I mean, on consoles, you just kind of get like your standard controller. And video games are very centered around that specific controller, the way that that controller works, the way that it has the quirks, the shape, the whatever kind of thing. Um, and the controller of video games in terms of computers has always typically been like what you call the keyboard and mouse. Now, lately, or... More recently, a lot of video games started switching to being able to have like keyboard and mouse and video game controller support. But that video game controller support has always been specifically X input or Xbox controller. Now, this was meant to be able to give PC gamers a couch like experience. So, if I wanted to just like pop my laptop into like my big screen downstairs, sit down, and have a console like experience with this and Steam Big Picture mode, I can do that because Steam Big Picture mode has a very good, albeit maybe need, I mean, in need of some work interface, that gives me a very console-like experience, and the Steam controller eloquently can browse through that um, console-like experience very quickly, very easily, things like that. Now, the Steam controller is very, very remappable, so in multiple situations, you will find that this controller works perfectly in many sort of ways. Um, wonderful for keyboard and mouse games like Civilization V. Wonderful for console games too, like Borderlands, where maybe the controller support's a bit more specifically there. Um, Steam controller support also can range from wonderful to maybe not so awesome, but still workable with. And it also depends on the game as, um, itself as well, as to whether or not it'll work. Fighting games like Street Fighter, you don't want to use the Steam controller for, but some shooter games like Borderlands, for example, work perfectly with it. Um, also, one of the most interesting things that we've gotten out of the Steam controller as of late, because Valve saw another problem, was support for multiple controllers. So, 
they have a special software called the Steam Controller Configurator, which I'll showcase here right now. Which is when I go Controller Configuration, I can remap how buttons are assigned to a game specifically. So, like, this right touchpad, when I go into Borderlands 2, is assigned to act like a mouse. When I go into the game, I push the face buttons, it's going to think I'm pushing X input face buttons. Now, that's great and all, except that right now this game thinks I'm using a keyboard, mouse, and a controller at once. So it thinks I'm doing this kind of thing, where I'm moving my game controller buttons, and I'm left-clicking with my mouse at the same time. And it has a certain interesting effect that I'll showcase later when I start to play video games a little bit. Um, but they also, for the Steam controller, created their own input standard. So it's not just X input, direct input anymore. It's X input, direct input, and Steam controller input as well. Well, more well known as the Steam input. Now, how do I know, or how do you know, if this game that you're using has that input standard built into it? Um, one of the ways that you can find out, and I'm going to show you a not Valve game, is because when you map your controller, you can map A, B, X, Y to be A, B, X, Y, or in this, the way the Steam input works, you can map your controller to work on functions. So in the Talos principle, right here, all of these are functions that I can map. Now, obviously, it's showing me like the classic like X, A, A, B, X, Y input, like all that kind of stuff. But if I go there, I'm greeted with this list. So I can select an in-game function, which is different to how it would map to, say, Borderlands, because if I go to Borderlands, without a uh, game without Steam controller input um, standard support, you get this sort of effect where when I map a button, the buttons that I see are X inputs, so I can map it to a controller or I can map it to be the keyboard. Now, obviously, I'm not going to change the mapping because it works just fine for my use case, but you'll notice the difference between functions with the Steam Controller API versus just X input a little bit later. Um, now, my review of this controller. This is a very big controller, partially due to the way that it's shaped. The way that it's shaped is meant to direct your hands very specifically to the touchpad. So when I'm holding this controller, the concave shape is going to direct my fingers to the touchpads. Now that's wonderful, except that when I'm holding it, it's going to feel ginormous to me personally because my hands are medium sized, small sized -ish. And with that ginormousness comes sort of a discomfort for me when I use it. Now that's not a bad thing for some people. Some people it is to each his own. But like when I hold my PS4 controller right here, it feels very comfortable, very lightweight, very well off in my hands. I feel like I know this controller very well. Um, not so much with the same controller. And in some regards, I'd say it's lacking in familiarity. Now, to really be able to just showcase and help you understand the same controller for what it is, I'm going to show you a few games just short, uh, shortly played. Um, I'm going to be switching scenes, so my webcam isn't going to be vi visible in the game specifically but I will show you just kind of how they work with mapping and all that kind of stuff and explaining some features that the Steam Controller has that you don't find in any normal video game scenario as a whole as well. First, we're going to start with Borderlands 2 because I think Borderlands 2 is an excellent, excellent depiction of the functionality of the Steam Controller, especially in regards to shooter games. So I'm going to switch my scene when I hit play. So that you can see Borderlands 2 and what's going on and all that kind of stuff um, preemptively. So, okay. Now, hopefully, now you guys should be able to see it. There we go. Okay. Now, when I hit play, you'll be able to see the game. Um, once again, my webcam won't be visible during this scene, but it's because I really want the game to be sort of the focal point of the scene when it starts up. Ugh. Anyway.
Now, when I'm streaming in-game, you won't be able to see the overlay, specifically with Borderlands, because I just... If I exit out of the controller to give you a better perspective, the game gets messed up, and I don't want to do that. So, we're not going to do that. Yeah. Now, one thing you'll notice, though, as well, is that these touchpads are built with a specific, like, haptics system. So, when I move my touchpad, you'll hear a very loud sort of thing. Now, some people like that, some people don't. They each his own. But I'm just going to let you know that the touchpads themselves act very, very specifically interesting. Um, the frame, the FPS in this game might be a little slow, because I'm kind of running on a crap top. But for what it is, it'll be able to suit our purposes. Um... Now, one of the interesting things, the way that this controller is mapped with this game, I'm using a hybrid input, so the touchpads and the triggers are going to act like a mouse and keyboard input, whereas the face buttons are going to act like the Xbox 360 controller. Now, one of the interesting effects that happens specifically with Borderlands, you'll notice, is that icons will switch. So, when I'm really, really firing my gun, You'll see the icon, like the game indicator, switch to a more mouse and keyboard um, layout. But if I'm just jumping or if I'm just kind of moving around normally, then it looks like I'm using a 360 controller as far as the game's concerned. So it's funny how it switches back and forth. Um, and if you watch me play for a bit, you'll notice that as well. Borderlands 2 always takes forever to start up on my laptop, I swear. But anyway... Um, one of the other interesting features that I neglected to mention with this controller is it also comes built in with a, a gyroscope. So with shooter games, that gyroscopic control has a very interesting effect because I, when I go into view mode, when I go into sniper mode or anything like that, automatically activates my gyroscope and makes it so that I can fine tune my aim to specific enemies. Now, I'll show that here in a second when I get in game, how that works. Um, right now, my mission is I'm supposed to go beat the Firehawk, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show you just sort of basic, like, uses. So, one thing is, with my right touchpad, it acts like a mouse. So, when I move my right touchpad, you'll see how the game can go very quick. Sorry, excuse your warning for anybody that might be watching this. And also, if you guys have any questions about this controller, please feel free to post it in the comments. But anyway, so I get a very unique aiming style with the right track right trackpad specifically. Now you'll notice the button prompts right now say X because it thinks I'm using a 360 controller. Of course I can't open and I can't do a lot of things. But you notice as well, it switched to your keyboard. So when I go into view mode, my gyroscope takes control. I can go up with my controller, down, left, right. Now once again I'm not showing my webcam just because I want the focal point to be the game, not necessarily like my face with the controller. But the gyroscope adds a very interesting sort of like, I guess, use case, so to speak. Because um, with the right touchpad, you can get the general area of where the enemy is. And then the gyroscope can help you fine-tune that general area as well. Once again, sorry if the game isn't the fastest in the world. I'm using a bit of a crap top right now. But hey, it works for what it does. Now, with that right trackpad acting like a mouse, there's also, I guess, sort of an interesting... I guess, interesting feeling that the game gives off because the game feels a lot slipperier-ish, I guess, if that's the right word to use. Um, I think down here there's some bandits I can really show off the gun physics with. Or there will be here in a second. Okay, so we can just go... I'm going to look for some enemies to kind of show you guys how the gyroscope and the touchpad specifically can add um, some, in some interesting effects with the game. Now, one of those effects being that I get a more eloquent aiming style. But it also just gives me, I guess, a good view of my enemies. There's a lot of things that it does. But... Um with this controller as well. It's nice because if there's something I just didn't like about like, let's say this configuration that I'm using, I can edit it in game. I can open up the overlay, edit the controller, 
access buttons, access all sorts of stuff, and it just gives me a very good just sort of feel of how things Now I'm going to shut off my mic for a second, so... Okay, I'm back. Okay, so now I can show you guys more of the interesting use cases with this controller. Um, to my right, there should be some bandits. I don't know, because I did kill them earlier, so they might not be there. But they are. Okay. So, like I said, touchpad gives me a certain, like, perspective of just, like, aim, whereas the gyroscope gives me more, um, a fine-tuned sort of thing. So I can shoot him. Now, one of the interesting things is, because this controller has a haptic system built in, it feels like I can feel, like, a vibration, but it's not actually using, like, your typical controller vibration style. So, as I fight them, you'll notice that, like, the controller of my aim is very wobbly, but that's not necessarily a bad thing either. Now, when I click my right touch pad, um, my character punches, all that kind of stuff, so... I can go in for sort of like a berserking effect, and the right touch pad's click effect gives a very nice sort of punchy feel as well, so I can punch him as much as I want. Um, sorry, I'm sort of focusing on fighting these guys, but anyway, um, I hope this is sort of like a good demonstration of like how gyroscopic aiming can give you guys sort of like a good, um, good advantage on your enemies. Now, if I were better at this game, I would be aiming a lot better. And it's been a while since I've used the gyroscope, so notice that it might not be the best. But for what it is, it's a very interesting concept. Now, I actually have the sensitivity turned up a bit too high for me, which is why it's harder for me to hit them. Now, one of the things that's interesting about what Valve has done on the Steam Controller as well is that it's very remappable. Um, whoops, hold on a sec. Oh, were you guys able to see that for a sec? Oh, you can see the overlay. Sweet. So, it's very remappable, meaning that in-game, I can switch my controller to do anything I want. So, I can make this right touchpad, for example, be right joystick if I wanted to. So, right now, it's just the style of mouse, right? But if I go up here, I can make it the joystick. Now, I'm going to set it specifically for joystick camera because it means it's the right joystick and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I can change the haptics so I can make them just go like really crazy when I'm moving on like the controller. So it vibrates a lot, gives me a lot of interesting things like that. Um, I can also make it very sensitive if I wanted to. And I can also make it act like a mode shifter, which I'm going to be making several streams, if you would, that explain how button prompts how all that kind of stuff works but anyway so i'm gonna go back in just to show you how aiming style is different now this isn't to focus on my skill at borderlands it's just to focus on the features of the controller and how it works particularly um, pertaining to shooters now this is without the steam controller input status this is using x input now if you notice before it was really twitchy kind of camera style now it's more slidey type because it's acting like my right touchpad is a joystick instead of a mouse um which also gets rid of the button prompts shifting just a bit but not by much because my right trigger is left mouse click but it's actually a lot harder to aim like that wow Like this. 
Anyway, once again, guys, this isn't to show off my skills at Borderlands. This is just to kind of explain how things are different. So, like, you notice the way that the right trackpad acts very differently in Borderlands because I set it to act like the right joystick instead of a mouse. Um, now, I'm going to leave Borderlands because there's something else that I wanted to showcase with you guys. And something else that I wanted to get into as well. Now, in shooters, it works very well as a joystick and trackpad combo like that. But what I really want to show you is, I guess, the main focus of the Steam controller, which is that it acts like a keyboard and mouse. So I'm going to go into... Uh, Specifically, Civilization, because Civilization is a good game that'll depict a lot about the Steam Controller as a whole. So, and sort of the capabilities of said controller. And once again, if you guys have any questions about like maybe configurations that I'm using or things that I'm doing, please feel free to ask. Also, this channel as a whole, I'm going to devote specifically to being Steam Controller like configurations and maybe playthroughs of games with my Steam Controller as a whole, um, and other controllers. And I'm going to explain how that works later. Just as it has always been, when our memories of the... Now, this, this game does not have any sort of controller support whatsoever. This keyboard and mouse game is mapped to the Steam Controller as a keyboard and mouse. So like, when I push buttons with my Steam Controller, it's going to think that I'm using my keyboard and mouse. And also, you'll notice that because I can open in this game the Steam Overlay at a certain point, and I can edit it just the same. Once we get past this loading screen anyway. Okay, there it is. So the overlay loads up. I can go to controller configuration. And once again, I can totally um, edit the way that the controller itself like, functions and stuff like that. Um, hold on, I'm going to fix this so you guys can see it. Oh well, you guys can't see it right now, but anyway, so I can edit the configuration, um, I'm going to show you this particular configuration that I'm using, it's called Ditch This Stick by Medhav, Melhadev, yeah, by Melhadev. So, when I use my right trackpad, it thinks that I'm using a mouse right now. I can go single player. I'm just going to make this a totally just kind of quick random game. I'm not really going to play the whole game. I'm just going to show you like the way this game can help. leader of India. You are the ruler of one of the oldest countries in the world with history stretching back almost 10,000 years. A spiritual country. India is the birthplace of three of the world's great religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism. It is a passionate land of music and color, and it is a land of great wealth and grinding poverty. For centuries, India was divided into kingdoms who fought constantly with each other and against outside invaders. In the 12th century AD, India was conquered by... So, once again, the Steam Controller is my mouse. So, when I use my left trackpad, I can sort of sc like scroll around on the screen. 
Um, because it, it thinks I'm using sort of a... This is a good place to found a city. Food and resources are plentiful here. Press your Settler's Found City button. Sorry, it's been a while since I played this game. There it is. But anyway, so all of this is happening with my Steam controller. Um, Consider sending your warrior out to explore new territory. I'm actually gonna add in my webcam so you guys can see a bit more what's going on. Okay, let's see if I can remember a view. There we go. Because I want to really, like, I want to emphasize that what I'm really using right now is nothing short of my Steam controller configured to be a keyboard and mouse, and just that. Okay. Okay, there we go. So, when I move anything on the right touchpad, you'll notice that the mouse itself works. So I can click right here. Now obviously I have a city founded right here. So let's see if I can go to certain things. I can move my warriors around for example. Um, when I right click with my joystick, I can move them. I can tell them I want to go, let's say right here. And they'll move. Now I have to wait my turn. <coughs> okay, so I actually have to push the end turn button, which I don't remember what it is with this configuration, so I'm going to go in here to the overlay, which you guys can't see, sorry about that, it's just sort of a glitch with the camera and stuff like that, um, and he has set it to, okay, so if I click the right touchpad, then that should end my turn, theoretically speaking, so if I do this, oh right, great, Sorry, I'm trying to get this um, configuration to work. Well, anyway, um, you guys get the point. So this is very playable in terms of the Steam controller, just the way that it works as a whole. Now, one of the interesting things that Valve has also done, once this game goes away, and I'm going to go back to my main scene. So, let's go... Whoop. Right there. One of the interesting thing, th things that Valve has done is they have this controller uh, API that lets you modify like what game you're using and how it um, interacts controller-wise. But they also didn't limit it specifically to the Steam controller. They made it so that every controller that you have can actually use the Steam controller API by building native support for a lot of controllers into Steam. And hey, welcome to my um, show. Feel free to post any comments if you have questions about how all this controller stuff works. Um, or if you just want to say hi or anything like that. I love reading comments. So, Anyway, like I was saying, we have support for multiple controllers and multiple APIs and stuff like that. Now, the way that we can access that and tell Steam that I'm using an Xbox controller versus a PlayStation controller versus anything else. If you go into your main big picture mode specifically, it has to be big picture mode. Um, settings at the top right, which I know my webcam is covering right now, but you push the settings button, you go into controller settings, and you'll notice right here you have a list of all the controllers that Steam can support. So it can support specifically my DualShock 4 controller, PS4 controller support. You can enable that. It'll say that, you know, this will enable, disable, all that kind of stuff. It supports Xbox controller. So Xbox 360 controllers are added into the API. And then it can also support generic controllers. Now, what generic controller means is that I can map 
a random controller like this Super Nintendo controller, for an example, to act like a 360 um, controller, and the game will read like I'm pushing a 360. Now, when I enable those options, I can't just enable those and expect it to just read. I have to exit big picture mode once. So you exit big picture mode. And then you go back into big picture mode. So I'm going to plug in my Sony dongle because I use the dongle for my PS4 controller stuff. You go back into big picture mode. And you can turn on whatever controller it is that you're using. And you'll notice here in a second, it says PlayStation 4 controller. So I've already configured this with my account before. So it knows what controller this is and how it works and stuff like that. So when I move my joystick, it's going to show me a different button prompt as well. So if I push X, it shows me X, circle, square. That's just how Steam's API works. I could also remap video games based on that, the fact that I'm holding a PS4 controller versus a Steam controller. So like if I go um, into Borderlands and I go Manage Game Controller Configuration, you'll see that it shows me the overlay of my PS4 controller versus specifically like the Steam controller. And it also uses different um, configs. So if I go browse configs, there's no, there's one sp um, community config that works with this with um, my PS4 controller. Or I can make my own as well. Templates, I can configure it any way I want. Here I have my joystick to be a joystick, but I could also set this joystick to be what they call, let's see if I can remember, oh yeah, a mouse region. So this joystick now is going to act like my right mouse and adds a certain accuracy to the joystick and the mouse and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, the reason why this is nice and the reason why it's nice to have all these controllers sort of supported by Steam is because most games that have controller support only support your 360 controller so it becomes very difficult for people like myself who love PlayStation controllers to play Skyrim or any other game because most games don't support the input standard known as uh, direct input which involves the PS4 controller specifically now that's very tough to add support in for and there are there are utilities like DS4 Windows that make this map as like a 360 controller but I love using Steam because I can map this not to just be a 360 controller but to be a keyboard and mouse just the same as a Steam controller now bear in mind that while I am in this mode while I'm in PS4 mode if I have my Steam controller activated and I want to like let's say configure that you'll notice on the bottom there's a button that says switch controller so if I push my options button I can select what controller I want to change the configuration for. So I could push Steam controller, and voila, the overlay for my Steam controller comes up, and whatever configuration I want to set appears. That could also be done with my 360. So if I activate my 360 controller, um, Steam's going to detect that I have that activated, and it might even give me the new controller menu. Who knows? No, it recognizes that I have my 360. So now if I go into my controller configuration settings, and I push switch controller, 360, Steam controller and PS4. So if I go 360, voila, the specific template for my 360 controller. Now, you're saying to yourself, why would I add my 360 or any like, Xbox controller into Steam if video games already support it? Well, it's because I can remap a lot of games to keyboard controls, which is nice because if I wanted to play Civilization, I could play it with my Xbox 360 controller. Or even if I played something like Borderlands, which already has support for 360, I can map my right joystick and right trigger to act like a mouse, which gives me a bit more accuracy when shooting. And it's just, it has a lot of interesting use cases as well. Um, now, this game that I'm going to show next, the Talos Principle, I'm actually going to use my Steam controller for. So I'm going to disable the others just to make sure that it's specifically focused on that, um, has native support for the API of the Steam controller. So when I reconfigure the game, well, I'll just show you. So I'm going to go to the Talos principle scene. So sorry, this is going to go black for a second. And I know you guys can't see anything right now. But anyway, I'm going to go 64. No, okay, so we're going to go, yeah. That one. okay. Okay. 
Now, okay, so you see in the display, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to actually get rid of that so you guys are focused at specific Intel's. All right, there we go. And I know the screen is black, but you'll be able to see something here in a minute. Okay. Loading. 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 More loading. Oh, would you look at that? More loading. <laughs> but anyway, um... Now, in a minute here, when we get into the menu, I'm going to show you something interesting. So, we have the game menu. Now, you can see, I'm not using a keyboard and mouse in this case. I'm actually using what we call the Seam Code controller. So, in this case, this game is not seeing an Xbox with 60 controller. It doesn't think that I'm using a keyboard and mouse. It knows what the Steam controller is, and it's programmed to use that. So, if I go into Options, you'll see a special option right here that says Steam Controller. So if I push that, it'll open up the Steam overlay, which I am going to make visible right now. Move that to the top so you guys... Okay, so if I push it, you'll see the Steam overlay pop up, and I can actually reconfigure the controller from here, so... And just to prove to you that it was, I go... Options, Steam Controller, and the Steam Controller overlay pops up, and I can go into the controller configuration. Now, the reason why this game is seeing the controller is because it's using the Steam Controller input standard. One of the differences with the input standard of the Steam Controller is that when I push a button on my controller, it's not going to register that I'm pushing a button, it's registering functions. So if I go here, you see a list of in-game actions that acts like a function list. Now, I'm using sort of the recommended template, but if I go X, community, you'll see that there's a list of like, um, community templates that people are using. And also, there's several votes on them and how long people have used. So I'm going to set this dude's... Um, yeah, I'm going to set this person's settings. So now, all of a sudden, I'm using this guy's input. For an example. Now, one of the ways that this makes this different as well, is it makes, at least in my opinion, the game feel like it's responding faster to my inputs and the buttons that I'm pushing, because it's directly interfaced with the Steam controller. It's not like the Steam controller has to interface with Steam, translate into an Xbox controller or a mouse or keyboard, and then go to the game. No, it's interfaced directly, game to Steam controller. So when I push button, the game knows what function it is, and it responds correctly. Right now, it's not reading a joystick, it's just reading the command, move left, move right, move back, move forward, jump. And you also notice that the button overlay is different, because it sees the steam controller specifically. So if I push X, it's just saying jump. The button overlay doesn't look anything like an Xbox controller at all, as a matter of fact. It looks very different. But every button, every action that I do in this game is being read as a function. So when I pick it up, it's saying interact, take object, take whatever. Now, yeah, it's showing me button prompts. But each of these button prompts is responding as a function, as an action. Now, I'm not actually going to spend a lot of time here. I just wanted to kind of show you basically how that works. 
and why that's different. Because instead of being like X input A, X input B, it's jump, dodge, punch, kick, whatever function you set it to be. The only thing is, is when I do, um, control change, so if I were using the PS4 controller, it does not show PS4 button prompts, it only shows the Steam controller button prompts, which is kind of annoying to me, which I, like I said, it's, it's a little thing, but I kind of wish that it would show you the button prompts. Oh, dear. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, are we stuck? Houston, we have a problem. Okay then, wait. Now, one thing you guys might be asking is, okay, so this is great. Now, everything that I buy from Steam is going to be addable. So anything that I, I can edit with Steam I can edit with Steam kind of thing, right? So if I buy a game from the Steam store, it'll have Steam controller support. But what about games I don't like from the Origin you play or like software like emulators and stuff like that? Now, I'm glad you asked that because emulators and other software totally work just fine. The way that you have to do it, though, is it has to interface with Steam. So if I go add an on Steam game, browse, I'm going to add... um. Big box. So I'm gonna go. If I remember where it is, oh, I remember where it is. It's in here. Launch box. Yeah. So I'm gonna add launch box in the Steam to show you some um, uses for emulators as well. So if I add big box now, I can edit that non-Steam game or that shortcut as if I um, had always had it. So you'll see the edit Steam controller button as if it was always a part of the game in the first place. Um, so right now, I have it set to act like an Xbox 360 controller. There's no community templates for the Xbox, I mean, for Big Box specifically, but I might actually ex export this one. So I'm going to show you the gamepad setting, but I'm going to modify it actually a lot. So, oh yeah. It thinks I'm using my 360 controller. Okay, that's why. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to show you specifically the gamepad setting, the gamepad with high precision camera aim in Big Box. Now, the interesting thing, when you use a front M in Steam, you get sort of like a hybrid kind of thing because Steam doesn't know what ga like game I'm launching from that front end. So whatever configuration I set with that front end, that's what it's going to use for every emulator, every game, every everything. It's just going to assume that that configuration works for all of them. Now, one thing is this left touchpad. I'm going to switch back to my normal scene. This left touchpad is actually a D-pad. Now, normally when I set settings with the left touchpad, it's going to make me have to click things like that. Um, but I can turn that off so that when I touch anything, Assuming it's going to let me get in there. Why won't you let me change that? Uh oh. Well, anyway, normally I can turn off the click and stuff like that, and it would work just fine. Now, that's actually all the time that I have for today. My next video, I'm going to depict, or I'm going to explain to you guys how emulators work. And then later, my Steam channel, well, this channel is going to actually turn into a sort of like a channel specifically meant to just show um, configurations with the Steam controller and stuff like that. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask whenever I stream. Have a good evening. Goodbye.